tell me, in the previous two videos, we talked about how to perform the instrument alignment to get a really good beam. In this video, I'm going to show you how to acquire conventional bright field TEM images. The specimen we use today is a shaped memory alloy. The sample was prepared using electropolishing. After opening the gun valve, in some of the cases, the electron transparent region is not in the field of view, so we need to move the specimen around to find the hole. And here we see some illumination, and here we see the, uh, the vacuum as well as the electron transparent region of the specimen. The first thing to do is to find the eccentric height of the specimen. So let's find a feature of interest. In this specimen here, we can see there's a small part protruding out, so we can use this part to guide us to find the eccentric height. To the eccentric height, we can go to search, then click wobble. The specimen is moving, and from this we can tell it's not at the eccentric height. To set the eccentric height, we use the Z buttons. Let's press down first to see whether the rocking becomes more severe or it's getting less. It's actually getting more severe, so we know we are going in the wrong direction. Let's press the Z up button. You can see it's getting better. Now the specimen barely moves when doing the wobbler, and we know that the specimen is at its right eccentric height. In order to deactivate the wobbler, so just click on the wobbler button, and the stage now stops rocking. When the specimen is set at the right eccentric height, as well as the focus is set correctly, the contrast of the specimen is minimized Believe it or not, uh, we're actually looking at part of the specimen, but the contrast is terrible. We cannot see the microstructural features. In order to enhance the microstructural features, we need to insert objective aperture. To insert the objective aperture, you go to the apertures window and click on the drop down menu. There are many, many sizes you can choose. So let's try 100 for now. On the digital micrograph, the image we see right now is the image without any objective apertures. Now let's insert the 100 micro objective aperture. You can see the contrast gets slightly better. Now let's try even smaller aperture, like 50 micron objective aperture. The contrast gets even better. By inserting the objective aperture, we can see the contrast can be enhanced, and usually smaller the objective aperture, the better the contrast. However, in some of the cases, the aperture is not well aligned. Next, I'm going to show you how to align the objective apertures. In order to align the objective apertures, the first thing to do is actually to take out the objective aperture. So you click on the drop down menu and click retract. Insert the SA aperture, the selected area aperture. Center the aperture. And hit the diffraction button. The scope now transforms from the imaging mode to diffraction mode. We can use the intensity knob to make the diffraction patterns sharper, like spots, or going the other way, making the diffraction patterns more disk-like. When it's disk-like, this is convergent beam diffraction. Let's first insert the 50 micron objective aperture. It's quite centered actually, and you can see 
a lot of the higher order diffraction spots are getting blocked by the aperture. Let's center the diffraction patterns a little bit using the multifunction knobs. Next, let's use a smaller objective aperture, like a 10 micron objective aperture. And this is off-center. To center the objective aperture, we click on Adjust. And use the multifunction X and Y knobs. Now, multifunction X and Y knobs, they control the aperture position. So we move the aperture to the transmitted beam to form the bright field image. After moving the objective aperture over the transmitted beam, we can hit the diffraction button again to exit the diffraction mode. When doing the objective aperture alignment, this is the only time we insert both the objective aperture and the SA aperture. After the alignment, we can remove the SA aperture. Converge the beam a little bit. And let's have a look on the computer screen. You can see that with the smallest objective aperture, you get the best contrast, but you sacrifice the signal to noise ratio. In this slide, all the images were taken from the same area of the specimen with and without objective apertures. When no objective aperture was inserted, we get the best signal, but the worst contrast. When we used the smallest objective aperture, in this case 10 microns, we get the best contrast but sacrifice some signal. To improve the signal to noise ratio, when you use a small objective aperture, you can either converge the beam or increase the image acquisition time. In this video, we showed you how to take good bright of TEM images. In the next video, we'll show you how to apply diffraction patterns on camera.